Hi friends, welcome to the mains answer writing practice. Here on every alternate day, I would be giving two questions for which I will be giving the answers to and those students who write the answers can mail them to mainswithsarath at gmail.com and we would be evaluating your answers. However, priority would be given to the students who write the answers regularly. After you write your answers, you can compare them with mine. So, let us discuss the questions that I have given in the previous class. So, I have given one question on the grasslands, a part of geography that comes under the general studies paper 1. Another question is about the civil services contract rules, which comes under the polity and governance general studies paper 2. So, first let us come to the first question, the fourth question and discuss the answer. So, here the question has one statement and then a question. See the grasslands, grasslands are one of the major ecosystems of the world covering almost 30%, 33% of the earth's terrestrial surface. That is a statement they have given and on that they ask you to discuss the importance of the grasslands to ecology and economy. So 80% of your mocks depend upon this part you have to discuss the importance of the grasslands for the ecology and for the economy. So most of your answer shall be focused on that one. As it is a geography question, it is better if you could draw few diagrams in the answer. Now for these kind of questions, I would suggest you that in the introduction, you write one or two lines about what is a grassland and you try to prove that how it is a major ecosystem covering one third of the earth how it is covering one third of the earth. So you prove that with two or three lines and then come to the actual question. So let us first in the introduction define what is a grassland. You can say that you know uh, in grassland most of the canopy is covered by the grass or grass like species. It has very few trees say some 10 to 15 trees per every hectare per every hectare of the land and grasslands are mostly prone to the drought mostly prone to the drought and the forest fires. So that's how you define the grassland. Okay. And then uh, you have to prove that it is a major ecosystem. It's given in the statement. They did not ask you to prove. But in the introduction, it's better you try to emphasize the statement they have given. So either you can write in sentences or you can just draw a diagram showing how it is covering one third of the earth's surface, terrestrial surface. You know, you can draw the world map, Alaska, Greenland, you know, Africa, Saudi Arabia, the Europe, the India, you can draw the world map, the Australia and you can say if you know the names you can showcase your knowledge, you can say that this place Lanos, Lanos, you know this place of Brazil. Lanos in the Venezuela, in the Brazil we have Campos, Campos, in Argentina you have got the Pampas, the Pampas, these are the grasslands, grasslands are called with different names in different countries, for example in the North American area it's called as prairies, prairies and in Central Asia, in the, cent in the Europe, you know Central Asia and Europe it's called as the steppes, steppes. In particular in Hungary, it's called as the Pusaj. Pusaj. In Africa, the Northern Africa, it's called Savanna. In Southern Africa, it's called as the Wells. Wells. You know, in Australia, it's called as the Downs. The Downs. Even India has got the grasslands in and around the Rajasthan. So, you know, these are the these are broadly the important grasslands of the world. So, in this map, indirectly we are showing that almost one third of the ecosystem is, is consists of grasslands. And also you are showing, you are showing uh, your knowledge in the grasslands by telling the names of different grasslands in the world. However, try to finish this part in less than 10-20 seconds. And also write just one line on uh, uh, that there are broadly two types of grasslands, the tropical and temperate. No need to write much about that. Just say that tropical grasslands lie between the tropics and there the length of the height of the grass is you know almost like 4 meters high. Whereas in temperate grasslands the grass is shorter shorter but it is more nutritious you know the, for example the grasslands uh, 
the lanos and campos are the uh, tropical grasslands pampas and uh, the prairies as the temperate grasslands like this between the tropics is tropical the remaining are temperate grasslands so you finish this part of the answer in the first half page or so and then you come to the main question discuss their ecological importance and economic importance there for example the importance to ecology ecology definitely any uh, question on the ecological importance you write about the biodiversity you say that these grasslands have various species various species of the plants and as well as animals for example plants different ferns flowering plants club mosses are there uh, if you take say some 50 square meters of the land in that almost 140 250 types of vascular plants will be there so they have got the rich biodiversity for example in the south africa south africa in the wells agulhas plain is one of the richest grasslands it is one of the biodiversity hotspots so in that way it is important to the ecology even you can talk about the birds if you know the names you can mention one or two birds for example i would say that in the indian grasslands around rajasthan the great Indian bustard, the great Indian bustard is an important species. So, in fact, the grasslands are habitat to several endemic birds as well as animals, several grazing animals. Mostly they, they form in the herds, the zebras, antelopes, and several predators like lions and cheetahs. You can mention one or two names. Generally, in geography, the maps, I mean the diagrams, the maps, and some examples would fetch more mocks. Examples like Agulhas, for an example, like the great Indian bustard, and some animal names. You can mention them. Then uh, another importance that it provides to ecology is uh, grasslands help in avoiding the soil erosion. They prevent the soil erosion because they hold the soil. Also in grasslands most of the carbon is stored in the, under the soil as organic carbon. Organic carbon. They are rich in the carbon, the um, grasslands. Then generally like any other forest, any other forest, the grasslands also, the, you know, they do the photosynthesis, they absorb the atmospheric carbon, they store in them. And during the transpiration, they leave some of the carbon to the atmosphere. They help in the carbon cycle. Carbon cycle. Also, grasslands are the natural water purifiers. As the water passes through the grasslands into the nearby lake, most of the, the you know the nutrients or most of the solid particles would be taken away by the grass. So the same points you can show in diagram if you have less time. Generally, in general studies paper one, geography questions are asked in the last last seven to eight questions. So when you do not have time, you can show the same thing in a diagram. For example, just with a diagram, one of the grassland. Grassland has trees somewhere. For every one hectare, some trees will be there. Mostly grassland, like park-like, park-like ecosystem. And you can say that the soil, soil has organic carbon mostly, and you can say that the water purifier. This is a lake, lake. Okay. So in this process, the water is purified, and you can say the carbon cycle, the carbon cycle, and you can say you know rich rich biodiversity of plants uh, you know animals and birds so in this way you can just show the ecosystem services done by the grasslands then what is the importance of grasslands to the economy economy uh, you know grasslands has a wide variety of the grass which can be used as a biomass we, we, some people call it as an energy grass energy grass you know some of it, it is actually a renewable form of energy because it can be grown again and biomass bioenergy one importance secondly the grasslands as i told you it is a grazing ground for the animals it has got nutritious food which provides good food for the animals and from the animals we can get a lot of animal products like the meat the milk the wool and other parts of the animal that can be used for various purposes uh, which has economic importance even the medicinal plants medicinal herbs are found in the grasslands even in indian grasslands several medicinal herbs are found used by the Ayurvedic doctors. Then the grasslands, you know, are famous ecotourism places. For example, in the Savanna, in the Savanna grasslands, an example is Lake Nakuru. It's a national park in the Kenya. It's a famous national park. It generates a lot of revenue from the safaris. And even these grasslands are famous for the fishing, for recreation, you know, for hiking, etc. Even Argentina, the, the temperate grasslands, the Pampas, the Pampas has a famous national park called Kalal. So it creates a lot of revenue for this country. And overall, you know, almost uh, in the world population, almost nearly 1 billion people will depend, uh, do depend on the grasslands. Grasslands. In that way, it, is, it has a great economic importance. And you can conclude the answer. Generally, for any answer regarding the forest, grasslands or any ecosystem related questions, you can conclude by saying that we have to conserve that particular ecosystem. You can say, you can talk about a few threats to the grasslands. You can say, you know, Threats, few threats to the grasslands are fragmentation of the grasslands because of uh, 
you know, because of uh, the economic activities, the construction of dams, roads, railways, whatever, and the burning, burning of the, uh, the grasslands for the for clearing for agriculture, the plantation of trees. Generally, trees should not be planted in the grassland because grassland is meant for the grass, and you are changing the ecosystem by planting trees, which actually destroys the grassland ecosystem. Then the overgrazing. Just because it has got nutritious grass, you cannot, you know, uh, you, you cannot use it for the for grazing beyond the capacity of the grassland. Overgrazing or one reason, then clearing. So they are then planting ex exotic weeds. So these are the various uh, threats for the grassland. You can uh, draw a small uh, uh, diagram like this uh, for quick, for quickly answering the question. And then just write a single line uh, conclusion saying that uh, uh, these are white today shall be. Uh, shall be regulated properly so that we can conserve the grasslands which is a livelihood for 0.8 billion people like that you can conclude then coming to the next question i asked in the last last uh, video the question is about civil services conduct rules it's, it comes under the polity and governance sometimes this question can be even asked in the general studies paper 4 the ethics ethics but here this question i gave in the context of gs2 so uh, read the question you can pause the video read the question uh, the question actually says that civil servants civil servants are not allowed to criticize the government policies so in that way there is a restriction on their freedom of speech according to the central civil service conduct rules 64 so the question is asking do you think it is a violation of the freedom of speech generally i would suggest that in polity in polity you can write little bigger introduction Whereas in economics and geography, as you will have a lot of points, a lot of diagrams, you have to keep your, your introduction very small, three to four lines. However, in polity, you can go for five to six lines of introduction. Because in polity, building up the context actually, you know, makes it clear for the evaluator. You have to build the context. So in that way, for this question, uh, in the introduction, you can briefly write about the fundamental rights and what are the restrictions on the fundamental rights. And then you can slightly write about what are civil service conduct rules and then you relate these two things how civil service conduct rules have put a restriction on the fundamental right of freedom of speech to the civil servants okay so let us start in the introduction quickly see generally in the polity answers it is good if you you know use certain articles from the constitution of india when polity question is given just close your eyes for five seconds think what are the various articles in the constitution that you can use in this question also supreme court judgments or any high court judgments that you can mention in the answer also any reports law commission reports any reports that you can use so first five seconds just close your eyes think of various articles judgments or reports that can be dumped in the answer for enriching the answer and then you start the answer so here article 19.1 particularly a talks about the freedom of speech and expression however article 19.2 has put reasonable restrictions on the freedom of speech particularly your speech should not you know uh, cause any national security problems or it should not uh, uh, lead to communal hatred violence there are some restrictions like that just quickly write that article 191a uh, gives freedom of speech to every citizen of india however article 192 puts reasonable restrictions and here coming to the question of civil service conduct rules you can say that article 309 of constitution of india allows the parliament of india to make a legislature, uh, to make a law, an act of how to appoint the civil servants as well as regulating their service conditions. So using this article 309, parliament has made the central civil services conduct rules in 1964. So what are these rules? Just write one line. You say that these rules are clear guidelines of what government is expecting from the civil servants, their employees, government's employees, what they are expecting. Clearly it is mentioned in the civil service conduct rules. And remember that it's not only for professional life even there are some restrictions for the civil servants in their personal life also personal life also so if anybody violates this uh, contact rules there won't be any judicial proceeding but there will be departmental proceeding any warning or discipline action can be taken okay just one or two lines you can write about this contact rules and come to the actual question the question says that this civil service contact rules is restricting the freedom of speech you say yes because in the civil service conduct rules, it is clearly mentioned that anonymity and neutrality are two important qualities that shall be maintained by the civil servants. So anonymity in the sense a civil servant officer, a civil service officer, I mean a civil servant basically should be anonym, anonymous. He should not try to you know get the recognition for the work that he is doing. He should not come out for recognition. He should remain anonymous in his actions as well as means he has to work behind the screens. 
similarly he should be neutral neutral in the sense whichever political party comes into the power it should not matter to him he has to work with the same passion same zeal same enthusiasm so to achieve these two things definitely there is requirement of restriction of freedom of speech forget about civil servants even a normal citizen has restriction of freedom of uh, uh, speech in that way you uh, can write the introduction and here generally mostly what students do is for this kind of questions they will say arguments against the statement arguments for the statement don't write like that it means don't make your answer look like a uh, standard structure you uh, your answer should be freely flowing from the question so don't put the standard headings put by everybody just you write initially you talk about fundamental rights then talk about concrete rules then come to the freedom of speech you say that these restrictions that that were kept on the freedom of speech has got some reasons what are those reasons you explain the reasons just mention the reasons for example you can say that uh, uh, if a civil servant criticizes the government policy it would be again as the political executive so hence he should not do that without doing that he has to maintain a harmonious relationship with the political executive only then the government machinery can run smooth so this is one reason that you are writing for the restriction of the freedom of speech second you can say a civil servant for him a public interest should be more important than his individual freedom in that way some uh, criticism shall be restricted again as the government similarly you can say a civil servant will take an oath to maintain secrecy to, to respect that oath of maintaining secrecy he should not come out open and criticize the government policies in that way also it is reasonable restriction only also uh, by maintaining that neutrality by not criticizing the government policy he is actually preventing the politicization of bureaucracy so neutral bureaucracy is better than a politicized bureaucracy in that way the restriction can is reasonable okay even the masterman committee if you know you can say the masterman committee of uk also says that a a neutral bureaucracy is far better than the politicized bureaucracy so in that way you are explaining the reasons behind the restriction of freedom of speech however the question says do you think do you think it's a violation you can say that in the present in the present form of civil service conduct rules definitely there are some problems definitely there is unreasonable restriction on the fundamental right and that you can explain this is my opinion i'm explaining this one if your opinion otherwise you can write in that way so you can say that there are some unreasonable restrictions which are not good for example even sardar vallabhai patel said that that uh, civil servants can actually freely and frankly advise the political executive about the government policies without any fear or favor okay similarly even uh, apple b said that for good governance for, if you do not know the name you can write generally for good governance in the present context as good governance is important civil servants shall be proactive they, there is a requirement of them to be accountable and transparent and it is said that neutrality and anonymity actually disturb this account disturb accountability if you try to maintain neutrality and anonymity indirectly you are not proactive you are not accountable you are not transparent so this would affect the public service the efficient deliver public service also the civil service contract rules have some vague terms they have got some vague terms like any capable of embarrassing a civil servant should not talk anything that is capable of embarrassing the, the government that is very vague see this kind of terms will give discretion to the political executive to punish the civil servants okay even the calcutta high court in the krishna chandra chatterjee case you can mention one or two cases in the krishna chandra chatterjee case even the calcutta high court said that this kind of term shall be removed from the contract rules even the supreme court said in the kedarnath case supreme court said that restriction on the freedom of speech should be there only when it is causing public disorder otherwise uh, they should be allowed to you know have the freedom of speech that means it should be reasonable restraint you can mention an example if you know that uh, in jammu and kashmir basant rath he was in the traffic department at the time a senior ips officer when he wrote an article in the indian express or you can say a national newspaper he wrote an article on policy okay home ministry took that seriously because some of the sentences in the article as per home ministry are capable of embarrassing the government even uh, if you read the article you feel that there is nothing to embarrass the government in fact so you can give one example like that 
then also you can say that these civil service founded rules are to some extent colonial colonial in the sense of in the colonial times the civil servants were actually their allegiance to the crown they have to strictly follow what the crown says they should not instead of thinking of public interest they should think about the interest of the crown so some of uh, the civil service crown rules are similar to the colonial hang See, even the personal life the civil service crown rules are restricting the personal life freedom of speech for example when shai fazal tweeted in his personal capability personal life as he tweeted about the rape culture of india it has been taken seriously by the government so you can mention some of these points and then you can conclude on a good note you can conclude on a balanced note see there is no need that you should be balanced you can conclude on one side you can say that these are bad however you should have a strong evidence for that okay but it's safe to conclude in a balanced way saying that overall that uh, restriction is good but to some extent only in the present uh, format of contract rules there are some provisions that shall be removed you can say that just because a, 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 you know an intelligent person is uh, getting into the government employment as is taking the job as an ias ips officer or whatever does not mean that he has to completely give away the fundamental rights even the supreme court said that there can be some kind of uh, uh, you know restriction on the criticism of government policies but a blanket prohibition that means nobody should criticize government policies that kind of blanket prohibition is unwarranted you can say that friends the questions for tomorrow for tomorrow the questions not tomorrow day after tomorrow as i would be discussing the answers for this day after tomorrow i would give a gap of one day in between so you write the answers for this and you can mail it to mainsearch@gmail.com friends thank you